soulmates. Welcome in. Welcome in. Fox Soul's Black Report Friday. Friday. <laughs> okay. December 16th. I'm Courtney Hicks. And I'm the Cordelia Corte. We're honored to stand behind this desk every day to take you on a journey across Black America and the stories that impact our people. You know, we're going to bring you our news, our views, and our voice. So let's uh, tap into what's uh, happening today. Aaron Dean, the former Fort Worth, Texas police officer, found guilty of manslaughter in the 2019 shooting death of 28-year-old Atatiana Jefferson in her home. Now, Dean faces up to 20 years in prison for the conviction. Here's the very latest. As we, the jury, find the defendant, Aaron York Dean, guilty of the offense of manslaughter. Former Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean showed little emotion as Judge George Gallagher read Thursday's verdict. Guilty of manslaughter for the 2019 shooting death of Atatiana Jefferson. Outside of the courtroom, tears and outrage for some who were disappointed the conviction was not for murder. Others were more subdued with their reactions. I don't know what to say at this moment, honestly. Just trying to gather all the thoughts together. My spirit is not feeling good right now. Jefferson's siblings left the courtroom immediately, still under a gag order and unable to talk about the case. Witnesses and others directly involved in the case cannot talk until after sentencing. And while there was disappointment from some, Others saw this conviction as a step forward. And I've been here every day of this trial. And I, you know, and I applaud, I applaud uh, Ashley and um, Dale. They had a tough job, but they got something. And I got to, you know, explain to the community, something is better than nothing. Years ago, he wouldn't have never gotten tried. And if he did, he wouldn't have gotten convicted of any felony. So it's a small step, but it's a game for us. I think it's the appropriate conviction uh, charge of manslaughter. I didn't think it met the bar of murder. Uh, that is the intent, meaning he intended to kill her. He did kill her, and the jury found, in my opinion, that he was reckless, and it caused the death of someone else. They didn't buy the argument that he was in fear of his life. Dean taken into custody Thursday afternoon, a new booking photo posted on the Tarrant County Jail's website. It took roughly 12 hours, over two days, for the jury to make their decision. Yesterday, the judge gave them the option to consider a lesser charge of manslaughter when they received their instructions. Former Dallas County D.A. Russell Wilson says they likely spent a lot of time deciding whether Dean's act was reckless versus intentional. I'm presuming during their deliberations, they focused very heavily on the body camera video as we anticipated they would. And then there were different interpretations of that. Friday morning, the jury meets again to determine Dean's sentence. Wilson says we should expect to hear from more witnesses describing Dean's character and experience as an officer, as well as the life and loss of Atatiana Jefferson. So I expect the debate, if you will, regarding uh, the appropriate sentence to be uh, nearly as intense as the trial. Indeed, activists say they're hoping the sentencing will send a message to other law enforcement officers and departments. There's a new federal lawsuit that alleges that prison guards in Alabama let a black inmate bake to death. Yeah, the 44-year-old Thomas Lee Rutledge was found on December 7, 2020, with a body temperature of 109 degrees. The autopsy report details that the inmate was in his cell, sitting near the window of his cell, with his head face out the window, believed attempting to breathe and obtain cool or cold air. The 58-page complaint says that lawyers argue that William E. Donaldson Correctional Facility prison guards knew that the heating system, the, the, knew that the heating system uh, on the unit was faulty and had caused other men to die from extreme heat. Since the suit was filed, evidence from the boiler room has been destroyed. On September 22nd, 2021, Rutledge's lawyers requested the boiler log, but prison officials objected and kept the records. The suit further alleges that an official claims that the records were destroyed in a flood caused by a burst water pipe. Now to Minneapolis, where an inmate has filed a lawsuit claiming that the county jail violated his medical privacy. Fox's Paul Bloom has the latest. I'm sorry, I don't have the opportunity to do that day over again. Derek Leake offered something of an apology for the deadly stabbing of Bobby Commodore on board this Metro Transit bus back in April. The Commodore family, though, having sat through Leake's second-degree murder trial, 
saw a cold-blooded premeditated attack in the evidence. I believe that the defendant recognized and sought to harm and even kill my brother. In the coming days, Leak will be transported out of the Hennepin County Jail to serve his 30-year term in the state prison system. But in his wake, he's leaving behind this handwritten lawsuit the county will have to address. Leak claims he and other inmates have had their medical privacy rights, or what's known as HIPAA violated, in lockup in downtown Minneapolis. And he's asking for money, $25,000 in damages. Folks who are sitting in the Hennepin County Jail in the eyes of the law should be treated as closely as possible to folks who are outside. Leak claims on a couple of occasions, sheriff's staff announced on the in-house PA system, something to the effect, quote, my Suboxone friends get to the front of the line when medication was handed out. Suboxone is a powerful controlled substance. Addicts may be prescribed for withdrawal symptoms and to wean them from opioids. Leak writes not only did it out his potential medical condition, it also put a target on his back as it would be a drug in high demand behind bars. Twin Cities trial attorney A.L. Brown, who's not involved in this matter at all, told me via Zoom Thursday even a convicted murderer like Leak appears to have a decent argument to make, at the very least to tighten up jail policies down the road. I'd be concerned about uh, an entity that has my health records, which is very personal information, um, talking casually about them. Uh, in an open space. That would be a problem. And that it's a problem under the law. Brown went on to explain that the way Derek Leak framed his lawsuit will likely get it tossed out of court, but again believes if those allegations can be proven, they likely add up to a violation of the state's Health Records Act. The Hennepin County Sheriff's Office will not comment on any pending litigation. And to Louisiana now, where five officers face charges in the deadly arrest of Ronald Green after a grand jury indictment. The charges range from negligent homicide to malfeasance. Police initially blamed Green's death on a car crash after a high-speed chase, but the Associated Press later published body cam video showing the officers beating, tasing, and dragging Green as he begged for mercy. These charges follow several investigations that looked into whether top brass concealed evidence shown in that video. The Texas Attorney General's office reportedly asked for sweeping data on transgender people in the, his state. According to reports, Ken Paxton's office told DPS in June to put together a list of anyone who had changed their gender on their driver's license in the previous two years. The department responded by saying it could not put such a list together. Paxton's office did not comment on why it made the request. And the Oakland chapter of the NAACP says it supports calls for a recount in the Oakland mayor's race. The organization claims the city's ranked choice voting system confused many older voters and is blaming the county registrar's office for the confusion. Shang Tao cleared victory with 50%. 50.3% uh, of the vote over second place Lauren Taylor. Alameda County does not conduct a recount under any circumstances, but candidates or other groups can pay for one. In a statement, the NAACP says uh, didn't say it would fund a recount, but it would support one. Now, Taylor said he would not lead a recount effort himself. Nick Cordela, I know this is your neck of the woods, the Bay Area. Uh, you're from uh, San Francisco, and with all the midterm talk, pre-talk about voter um, intimidation and all the other tactics happening, do you think this could be the case? Well, I mean, I, I doubt that there was a, a case of voter intimidation here. Uh, you know, a 53% win, mm -hmm. you know, is is not a razor slim mm -hmm. uh, kind of win. Um, but the fact that the NAACP chapter in Oakland said that they are willing uh, th th that they want a recount, um, but stop short of saying that they were willing to fund to a recount. Um, I think uh, their their claim might um, uh, get a bit more traction uh, if, in fact, they uh, were willing to fund it. And mm -hmm. so uh, we'll see what happens in the coming days. But a 53 percent win for mayor, um, you know, is you know a pretty healthy victory. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Well, now uh, many people are still shocked by the death of DJ and dancer Stephen Twitch Boss. He was the DJ on the Ellen DeGeneres show for nearly a decade, and on Wednesday, he took his own life. 
Fox's LaMonica Peters joins us now after talking with mental health professionals about the alarming number of men who die by suicide each year and how we can help them. Because he's the kind of person that's such a light. He has an inspiring passion. You know, you would never realize behind all of that what was going on. For eight years, Stephen Boss, or Twitch, entertained millions on the Ellen DeGeneres show. But on Wednesday, he died by suicide at 40 years old. Boss rose to fame while competing on So You Think You Can Dance in 2008, ending as a runner-up. The CDC says men in the United States are 49% of the population, but make up nearly 80% of all suicides. Sean Barry is an associate therapist at Silicon Valley Therapy and Marriage Counseling. He says most men aren't socialized to cope with their feelings or talk about them, and the results can be devastating. In a nutshell, men don't have the support, encouragement, and skills to develop intimate relationships where they can be real and vulnerable. So they feel um, isolated, alone, and incapable of dealing with that emotional turmoil. Recent studies also show that black men in particular are dying by suicide at a higher rate than any other racial group of men. Bay Area psychologist Dr. Kathy Walters says issues of oppression, systemic racism, and generational trauma only compound the pressures that most men say they feel. Again, stigmas, right? I don't want to be seen as crazy. I don't want to be locked up. Right. And so I'm going to try to give you just enough that we can work with without going deep. Dr. Walter says these triggers can lead to feelings of shame, doubt and self-loathing. If it's not addressed, a person may think the only way to heal the pain is by self-harming or suicide. What I found to be helpful is to just provide that space that feels safe. Right. And allow them to talk and Pretty soon and gradually, you know, they start going a little bit deeper. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for black males ages 15 to 24. If you'd like more information on suicide prevention or you simply need someone to talk to, you can dial up the national hotline at 988. LaMonica Peters, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And again, if you need help, that number is 988. This is a story that hits very close to home. As I've mentioned before, uh, I lost one of my brothers to suicide. Um, and, you know, the pain never goes away. Um, you know, but uh, over time, it really helps to grow your compassion mm -hmm. for um, other uh, families mm -hmm. that um, uh, have that experience. Um, you know, you never really know what folks are going through. And so um, I take to heart some of the advice that was given in that piece that, you know, it's on all of us to be that safe space, um, you know, to, to allow folks to be vulnerable. Uh, and, you know, you never really know. I mean, a lot of people spend, you know, the rest of their lives trying to figure out, well, why somebody did that? How did they arrive at that conclusion? And going down that rabbit hole, you know, can, um, you know, be very uh, uh, off-putting uh, and, you know, can really disturb your healing process. Yeah. But, uh, you know, to think that, you know, this is the third leading cause of death for black men uh, uh, ages 15 to 24 in this, in this country, uh, this should be a call to action, you know, for so many folks in our community uh, to make sure that we're holding our black boys mm -hmm. uh, and, and black men close, close. Uh, because uh, uh, there's a lot out there. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot that folks have to contend with and, you know, not having the tools to be able to express what you're feeling and experiencing can sometimes, uh, you know, lead uh, to tragedies uh, like what we saw with Twitch and what I experienced with my brother. Yeah, um, my husband experienced uh, something very similar to what you just shared. And thank you for being so transparent and sharing that uh, with us. And as folks are still trying to grapple with, um, you know, Twitch's uh, demise, if you will, um, how do you go about, you and your family, you, and even I asked my husband this because you, everybody's asking for answers. They Even with the Twitch situation, they want to know why, why, why. There's uh, reports out today that uh, he did leave a, a, a note, however ambiguous it was, but it still doesn't provide too many answers. How do you come come to peace or, or at, or I don't know if it's at odds or how do you resolve, that's better, um, knowing that you may never get answers, why? Well, I mean, it, it's, it may sound counterintuitive, but I think you have to make peace with the fact that you may not ever really know why. Mm. You may not ever really know why. And 
uh, that's hard to do. Uh, but you know, part of what uh, allows for that peace process to begin mm -hmm. is demonstrating compassion for other people mm -hmm. uh, who find themselves having to uh, pick up the pieces after losing a loved one mm -hmm. uh, so suddenly or so tragically. Um, and also doing some of the self work, some of the healing that we all have to, uh, to do uh, in order to move forward. Uh, those are just a few steps that have worked for me, you know, but uh, make sure you consult uh, your uh, physician or therapist uh, to get the support that you need. Uh, one great way to start is by calling 988. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Appreciate thank that. you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. The CDC is urging a number of major cities to return to masking measures. Much of the New York and Los Angeles metropolitan areas are rated at high COVID-19 community transmission levels. Officials in New York are asking schools to return to indoor masking. Now, while authorities in Los Angeles are warning that indoor masking rules may have to return as cases rise. And as the CDC continues to report nationwide COVID-19 spikes, community organizations are reviving vaccination efforts with the all too familiar pop-up clinics. For our Houston area soulmates, the Luke Church on South Avenue Humble will hold a pop-up pop vaccination clinic this Sunday. And they'll be offering $25 gift cards while supplies last. You remember those uh, offerings as well. It's all a part of the Faith Health Vaccine Initiative funded by the CDC Foundation that brings faith and health by bringing uh, diverse faith leaders together to further the mission of reducing vaccine inequity. Now, according to the CDC, COVID-19 case rates and hospitalizations have increased by 50, 56% over the past two weeks. We've been talking about that here. Uh, and a, a high quality, well-fitting mask is the best protection against what health officials are calling a triple-demic, that being COVID-19, the flu, and RSV. And uh, moving on to another historic moment in black excellence as Harvard University announced that Claudine Gay will become its 30th president, making her the first black person and the second woman to lead the Ivy League school. Gay, who currently is a dean at the university and a democracy scholar, will take office July 1st of next year. She said, quote, I am absolutely humbled by the confidence that the governing board has placed in me. She also went on to say, I am also incredibly humbled by the prospect of succeeding uh, President Bacow, Bacow and leading this incredible institution, end quote. A child of Haitian immigrants, Gay is regarded as a leading voice on the issue of American political participation. She also is the founding chair of Harvard's Inequality in America initiative, which studies issues like the effects of child poverty and deprivation on educational opportunities and American inequality from a global perspective. Congratulations. Brittany Griner has announced she plans to play for the WNBA next season. In an Instagram post this morning, she said she's grateful to be back in the U.S. and for all the support throughout the last year. Her comments come a week after her release from a Russian prison. After being freed in a high-level prisoner exchange, the WNBA star thanks President Joe Biden and says she knows the White House is committed to bringing back ex-Marine Paul Whelan. Griner said she plans to return to the Phoenix Mercury this upcoming season. She also offered to use her platform to help Biden bring home more prisoners. Yeah. Wow, this story just keeps getting better it and does. better. Uh, you know, she is uh, thrilled to be home, and, and so many folks are thrilled to have her home safe and sound. I know she was in San Antonio, I believe, mm -hmm. going through uh, sort of a psycho psychiatric uh, evaluation. Yeah. Um, and I think that's been completed and she's now home with her family mm -hmm. for the holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, just this is an incredible moment for our country. Um, you know, a lot of people have made a lot of hay about mm -hmm. the swap for a WNBA player for uh, the merchant of death. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she's an American and we're glad she's home. Yeah, we are. And we just want to continue to pray for her and her mental health and her physical health. And it's going to be a time when she returns to the court. That's right. That is for sure. Go can't, Brittany. Can't wait to see it. That's right. Still ahead, stepping away from the game to work on his mental health. Yeah, speaking of basketball, we'll tell you who this player is and why he is retiring at the ripe old age of 22. We'll be right back. You're watching Fox Hills Black Report.